photography, what will impact your images more, the camera body or the lens? Which of the two should you invest your money in and why? Well, that's today's topic, so let's talk about it. As wildlife photographers, at least this one, we're always striving to get better images. We also have different audiences for our photography. Some just take shots for themselves, others take them to share with friends or social media, and others for professional uses such as prints, publications, and other media. But all of us, regardless of that image's final viewing destination, strive to get the best results we can. And that leads us to understand whether the camera body or the lens makes the bigger impact on our images. Of course, both impact the images, but which will make a bigger impact? And with wildlife photography, nothing is cheap. And the better the gear gets, the higher the price tag gets. So where do we focus our gear goals and our money? Now, before we start discussing the in-depth benefits of the body versus lens on photography, we need to talk about a couple things. First, no matter how good a gear you're using, if you don't understand or know how to get proper exposure, composition, good backgrounds and foregrounds, basically knowing your craft and model photography, then your image will never get to that level you desire. Wildlife photography is just like everything else. You have to learn how to do it and to practice it. If you don't practice each concept in photography, then if an opportunity arises when you have your desired subject within view, you're probably not going to capture that image the way you want it. Next is we all have different monetary investment levels we can make to our gear. So decide what level of investment you want to make and how much you want to put into those images you produce. Moses don't make money on our images, but it's still our main hobby and desire, so we may invest a lot more into that craft just because we enjoy the results we get out of it. So basically, spend what you can and don't spend more than that. Okay, camera body and lenses. For wildlife photography, that is. That's our focus of discussion. Wildlife photography, remember that, not anything else. If you're new to photography and this is your first camera rig, let's start that off then this discussion is good for you, but in this case, just buy a starter rig to make sure that you like wildlife photography before you invest a good chunk of money on it, because these bigger lenses, even the more, quote, affordable ones, can be almost $2,000. So get you a more affordable total rig of about $2,000 or less and start there. Now, if you're an experienced photographer looking to upgrade or just get better quality out of your gear, this is my take and experience on this subject. So let's talk about the camera body first. With the advent of mirrorless cameras and the EVFs and advanced subject tracking, this makes the discussion a little more complicated, but not too much. As these new advances help you get better exposure and hit rate, but the image itself, as the watts on the sensor, is pretty close really. You grab a Canon 5D2 or 5D3 and compare that to a newer R5. And the image is going to be very close to the same if you had the same lens on and same conditions, same subject and all that. It's going to be the same. Again, the end result is going to be the same of the image, not really the hit rate. The new advances of most modern cameras do change how you shoot in the field, but the end result and the final image, if you got the subject in focus, the exposure right, the composition how you want it, and so on, is still going to look the same. Yes, maybe dynamic range and such would be better on the newer and more expensive camera, but if you get the exposure right in camera, inside the camera, then the dynamic range is not really going to hurt you that much. Now, if you use an older DSLR and you jump to the newest mirrorless camera, yes, you're going to get better hit rate and probably get it right more in camera, but again, not really a better image, just more of them. Hope that makes sense, really. Now, there could be a change in color science over time or on higher level model cameras, but if you're moving within the same manufacturer, the color science should be pretty close. Of course, if you jump from a starter camera to a flagship camera in the range, that same manufacturer, then yes, you'll see a difference in the end image as far as color science and image quality. And if you jump brands from Canon to Nikon, yes, you're going to see a difference in color science because each manufacturer has a different color science. Sony, Nikon, Canon all have different color sciences. So quick review of the camera body, how I see it. By upgrading, you get more in the realm of hit rate and getting it right in camera, which basically when I say in camera, I'm talking about less editing and post. Now for the lens factor. To me, this is where you're really going to see an increase in the quality of your image. Better glass is going to get better image quality and colors. 
There's a reason that good glass gets more expensive and expensive fast. Uh, an example is uh, this 200 800RF and the 18600Z, they're under $2,000. This $9,000 and then $10,000. Then you get up into the 400s and more, you're talking $15,000, dollars you know, 11 to 15 grand. So it gets expensive real fast. There's a reason that good glass gets more expensive and expensive really fast. The better the glass gets, the better the lens glass processing is. The coatings on the glass, the number and types of elements in the lens. As far as the weather sealing, the focus motors, weight handling, these items are kind of like in the camera body. They'll make life easier, but it just helps with the hit rate. Not really a better individual image, that is. As you get better glass, you usually get faster lens, which means better light gathering and compression. We're talking going for an f11, f8, to 6.3, to a 5.6, or an f4, 2.8. So as you get better glass, you get a faster lens, better light gathering, better compression. Along with upgrading to better glass, the sharpness, the separation of your subject to the background, the bouquet, smoothness, the colors you get as you move up into the better glass is just much better. You're going to be able to pull off those smoother backgrounds or better play of the colors and the light and the shadows as you experiment with your exposure. You're just going to see a lot more of that and a lot more play you can do with a more expensive and better glass lens. If you ever get a chance to shoot one of these large primes, the 4028s, the 500, 600 F4s, you'll see very quickly how much better that image looks from just the lens alone once you stick it on those cameras. Like I can take my 2 to 800 and put on this or the 1 to 500 RF lens and put on this R7. I'll get a type of image, but once I put the 500 F4 in here, it's another beast altogether. Just looks so much better. I'm going to make a video very soon about those large primes versus the cheaper primes and the zooms. Now, not everyone has on their radar the newest 600 F4 or the likes but you should have some idea of the level of glass you want to eventually attain for the level of wildlife photography that you enjoy. It may be something like the Nikon Z400 4.5 or an RF 1 to 500, even an older 500 F4 or the likes. So the main takeaway for me is your image quality will increase with better glass. If you want to find a way to get better images that isn't education-based or skill-based, it's better glass. Along with working your way up to the end goal glass you're trying to attain is the longevity of the glass versus your camera body. Camera bodies usually get refreshed at the four to five year mark and the mount types usually stay the same for at least 20 years. And the next mount type supports the last mount type, if you know what I'm saying. So basically the EF lenses will fit on an RF and an F mount lens will fit on a Z mount, on that type of stuff. And the lenses, they can go from six to eight years or more between refreshes. And this Canon EF 500 F4 Mark II, it was released 12 years ago. It still works great on the latest RF mount cameras. So once you get to that end gold lens, it can easily last you 10 to 20 years. And a lot of the times the model refresh lenses don't make a large IQ change, but it's usually weight and handling. So it makes the decision on whether to refresh that lens a little easier. If you're only getting a small amount of IQ and a little weight savings, sometimes you may wait or you know save some more money maybe later to switch out to the newest version of that. So there's a Mark III or an RF version of this, then maybe I would think about that. Is the IQ better? Those type things. So what's the final answer of where you should be investing your money between your body and the lens? Well, to me, work your way up to the best lens you can afford for your wildlife photography needs. As once that gets set, you can do the camera refreshes much easier because you've already got your money invested in the lens. You don't have to invest anymore on a better lens. I see a lot of people making the same mistakes that I made early on with, with camera gear, and that was to get a decent camera body and then try to save a buck on the lens. Getting a good, like a Z8 or an R5, and then sticking something on it like a Tamron or Sigma 150 to 600 in it, and wondering why sometimes their images are just harder to get right in camera. It always bugged me. And yes, you can get great images with those cheaper lenses, but it takes a lot more work, and some things you just can't achieve with those lenses just due to the, the speed of the lens and the type of glass that's in the lens and the elements and the coatings. But as you move up to better glass, you'll see that it gets much easier to get those right in camera shots and pull off those shots you've always been hoping to achieve. 
I hope this helps as I get this question a lot. And it's a tricky one as everyone has different budget and end goal needs with their images. But if you strive for that better glass, you're going to see better gains. And until next week, get outside and go run that shutter.